Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Valerie Ling. I'm actually coming to you live today from the practice, the practice which I um, I own, but I, I actually think I'm really privileged to be a part of a, a collective. Can you hear our music? I have a feeling that that is our Center for Effective Living playlist, which um, the lovely Naomi, who's here on a Monday um, on front desk, has been compiling for us. Uh, I've had a great morning. Actually, I feel completely energized and I just wanted to hop on um, to talk to you a little bit about the burnout prevention stuff that goes on in this practice. I have to say that I feel very, very privileged to be a part of an authentic group of practitioners. Um, they may or may not realize this, but it's a pretty tough process to come and work in this practice. Um, one of my former lives, I was a human resources consultant, and so um, some of that stuff is infused into my DNA. But one of the reasons, one of the many reasons why this is difficult to get a gig in the Center for Effective Living, uh, other than you need to actually go through a number of interviews um, and some uh, cases which we put in front of you um, for you to work through is that I actually want to see people who want to be a part of a bigger vision and that is a vision to actually change the tide of this thing that I keep talking about which is burnout. It's an official diagnosis now it's no surprise to me really and it's about time that we put um, some effort. Now the thing about the way uh, we health professionals tend to think about things is we tend to think about things from a problem perspective. In other words, now that burnout is a diagnosis, you will actually find that it will be encouched in symptomatic language, uh, the things that are wrong, the things that tell you that you're burnt out. If you understand burnout, however, you will know that once you reach that point where the symptoms are checking off, it's actually been a historical journey of the things that have been built up, not just in your personal system, but the way that you do life, the way that you do work. And so it's not, you know, by the time you hit those checklists, um, burnout's been around for a while. And it is my really great privilege to be a part of a group practice who um, takes on some of this stuff so that we can go the distance and endure in our, our work. I've got one practitioner who's on leave today. Let me tell you that this leave is intentional. She's worked in this practice for a number of years and she has figured out her own individual patterns. She knows the clinic patterns as well uh, as to when uh, the rubber's going to hit the road in terms of a uh, case load. She understands her own individual needs and um, she's got a great pattern and every year we usually have a discussion about uh, not only when will she be taking leave, everything is usually planned in advance, uh, but we also make plans for how our clients are going to be supported. So we share uh, the care in our practice. Several of us can hop on at any one point so that um, our practitioner can be released to go and have some leave, come back recharged and refreshed. The same practitioner has also talked to me about exercise um, during the course that they've been here and I love the way that she's intuitively uh, leaning into some of the information that she gets from her body. Um, you will know that I like running. Um, we talked about running. We talked about modifying things based on, um, well, not intentionally, just corridor conversations, I have to say, because I can't take any credit for this stuff other than having practitioners who are, uh, who are servants to the process. Um, I've also had conversations with another practitioner who's gone on to do some fantastic conferences. She's really identified her growth plan I'm really, really happy and impressed about how she's actually really honed in to that need for having growth plans. And we talked about, um, again, corridor conversations, just about the recovery process after. You know, how are you actually going to let some of this learning stew and imbibe into you, uh, whether it's by um, taking some reflective time out to journal and process it, or what she's done for us recently. She actually presented it back to the team so that we could benefit from her learning. And I'm hoping also that she crystallizes for herself what it means to be right smack in the middle of uh, being authentic to that growth plan. 
of course you uh, might have read my post with my dietitian today no she's not my dietitian um well she is actually because i'm her client <laughs> a dietitian uh, i've submitted myself to the process of seeing the dietitian in our practice and her voice is constantly in my head now it's incredible every time i feel like i want to rush out the door and not have breakfast it's like the least liked meal of the day because to me it's like eating cardboard don't ask me why but that's just what it is hello chris thanks for joining me and uh, she's made a difference and i love the way that the team comes together really to live out uh, burnout prevention uh, living living engaged lives so that we can give of our best to our clients so i just wanted to leave there to remind you that um, it's not just about what we do as an individual it's what we, we do as a collective and it's also how we think about our workplace i do have a program coming up for therapists um, for better prevention uh, practices for therapists join me i've now got a new shops and services tab on facebook you can find it there chris says you're okay you're i'm with on brecky as in you're okay with breaking Chris? I'm gonna assume that that's what you mean. <laughs> I'll come back and check the comments once I sign off because I've got to go and uh, meet with one of my lovely practitioners here. Have a great morning, Chris. <laughs>